welcome to the Katie's Arms. I'm giggling because I'm sat on a stool which is balanced on a chair. So this has every uh, every chance of going spectacularly wrong. Although wrong would just mean that I fell on my arse, which in the grand scheme of Katie's Arms uh, means it's not really that wrong at all. And uh, thank you to everybody for joining. And also thank you to everybody who gets stuck in there all over the place. Uh, so there's lots of people out there who are talking now about the Katie's arms when I meet them. Uh, and that's a really weird thing, obviously, because this just started as a little me having rants in my office, study, whatever you call it, in the UK. So it's become a thing. Um, and there's so many people out there that come to my events now that are also kind of visitors here at the Katie's arms. So thank you for that. And just as an explainer that I try and give kind of um, quite often now, that this didn't start because it was like about my arms that wasn't the thing um i'm not that vain i mean i'm an asshole i'm not that big an asshole well, that's what i always answer when people ask if i'm going to go into politics which is like yes i'm an asshole i'm just not that big an asshole uh, so the katie's arms didn't come about because of my arms it came about because uh, pubs in the uk are generally called arms or they used to be so they used to be called things like the king's arms or the Queen's arms or whatever. And that, I think that related to the shield, as in the wooden shield that people used to have, right? So that's why this became the Katie's arms, because it was a pub for us all to come to at a time when we were being locked down as hard as, you know, freaking some major drug dealer from hell. Um, although they don't get locked down anymore in America. So that was the reason for the Katie's arms. And now we continue because, well, frankly, the world's still gone to ratchet. Um, and it's good for us to be together and remember to laugh because of course one of the things that's happening throughout all of this is people have lost their funsies because we've forgotten. Everyone's being so deadly serious about the fact someone may drop dead any second even though realistically nobody's dropping dead anywhere other than someone who was probably quite old and it was time for them to drop dead anyway. We kind of lost our ability to find the funsies. Also it's a lot harder to find the funsies when all you can see of someone is their chuffing eyeballs because you're not quite sure if those are funny eyeballs, although mine are quite funny. Also, mine slightly veer off now to different directions, <laughs> as is pointed out for me kindly by uh, people who are less than supportive. I don't know if it was to do with my brain surgery or whether one of my eyeballs, I think it's this one, it does veer off a bit. This, I think, can you see? I don't know if you can see or whether they're doing it now, but this eyeball here does veer off a bit. <laughs> I like to think that my left eyeball is kind of, um, you know, just is a bit like me. Like when my left eyeball gets bored, it just thinks, well, sod this, I'm off. <laughs> just piss off. So if I'm trying to look at something and my left eyeball's like, what this, <laughs> I'm going, it just goes, Yeep. and I'm not certain if it came about because of my surgery on my head. So many of you will know um, that I had kind of epic levels of brain surgery. Um, and I don't have a top of my head anymore. So it's one of the things we're going to do when we have a Katie's arms together, is I can do a really neat party trick where you can feel my brain here, here, and um, I can make my brain, if I <laughs> cleanse my stomach muscles, I can make my brain move. So I can let you feel a brain and I can let you feel a brain move. Um, but I wonder whether when they went in there and chopped around, whether they moved my left eyeball a bit like maybe the surgeon got a bit bored or a bit clumsy and was like Bleh, with his thumb and, and that, that sent my eyeball off. You know, this is just medical theory, which given the fact that most medical professionals seem to be talking out of their arse these days is as good as guess as anyone. If Fauci told me that someone had stuck their thumb in my head and moved my left eyeball, I wouldn't believe that little bastard either. Never believe anyone just because they're wearing a white coat. Remember that whole thing, the Katie Hopkins ethos. Just because someone has a uniform doesn't mean they get to tell you what to do. Just because you put a uniform on in the morning doesn't change who you are on the inside. If you get a badge, it doesn't mean you're important. And I give you the example of council workers, anybody paid by the council. They're usually people, and I'm not talking about everybody here because some people are delightful. I've always wanted to do a bin round, actually, uh, bin collection day. I've always wanted to work the bins. I need to sort that out when I get home. I need to find a local council guy who will let me ride his bin lorry with him. Because it always looks kind of like fast and muscly and busy. And it's done first thing in the morning. I reckon you're home by about one. So, oh, 
Shit, I just lost my things I wanted to talk to you about. I've got to go and get them. Hold on, this could be quite the disaster because I'm balanced like a, like a little egg on a cup. Okay, I suppose I could have just talked about freaking anything as I normally do. Oh, oh, oh. Right, that could have gone wrong, but it didn't. Um, yes, I've always wanted to do the bin round. But anyway, my point is um, that if you work for the council, basically your job's quite cushy because you're paid for life, you get a huge fat pension. Um, you could turn up. Most people that work for the council are typically quite overweight because it's quite easy and they wear slip-on shoes. Nobody should wear slip-on shoes to work. That's not a thing. Um, but people that, work, people that work for the council, um, well, generally, also, they get on my tits because they put up signs everywhere telling you to car share. Meanwhile, they all drive in on their own in their cars with their freaking lunchbox. They're always those sorts of people, aren't they, that make their own lunch. I can't remember where I was going with this. Yes, I can. They have those lanyards, so they love to wear the council workers' lanyard. Anybody that wears a lanyard's a bit of a dickhead, I think, or wears a badge here, because they're already trying to say, ooh, I'm somewhat more of something than you, or I've got a job, which in this day and age, frankly, you're freaking lucky to have, but B, you don't need to have a lanyard. And then people at the council go well, next level, don't they, because they do that thing with their lanyard, and they go, zzz, zzz the thing where you attach the lanyard. I remember this when I was at the bloody Met office. Um, they had those lanyards attached to their belt on that like weird pulley clip. And they go with it because it makes them feel like they're, you know, like ninja, ninja lanyard. And actually they're just like ninja wanker. Anyway, that was my lanyard rant. I think I'm over it now. Um, Casey, so people, people are asking on here, why are the haters on here? Don't, don't trouble yourself with them, my darlings, honestly. Just imagine your life and the occasional person that pisses you off. I just have a lot, a lot of people who are fixated on me and they hate that I'm so happy. They hate that I'm doing so well. They hate that I've made it out to America and I'm selling out my tours. And they hate me so much that they're sat here watching me, the very thing they hate, <laughs> in order to try and piss me off. And what they don't realise is that just adding to the number of people who see what I talk about and that I live large in their lives. They have such tiny penises. They live still with their mother. They never get to go out. Their most exciting moment is when they're gaming on a sticky keyboard or having a crafty wank in their mum's spare room. And they think somehow they have a right to criticise me in any way. And what they're forgetting is not only do I not give a single shit what they think, but that by them just being here and commenting on me, I have power over them, absolute power. Because they could have done anything they wanted right now with their lives in this time slot, 10 p.m. And they've chosen to come onto my Instagram, which they stalk, <laughs> in order to imagine they're having a say. So bring it, bring it haters, because I own you. I'm in your headspace. I'm far more fabulous than you. If we take our clothes off, my body's pretty much hotter than yours. My history is more fabulous than yours will ever be, as long as you care to live. And I am here living large, not only in my head, but in yours too. So to everybody else at the Katie's Arms, take no notice, darlings, of them. Uh, you have to uh, rock it the way I rock it. And it's true to say that without the haters, um, I would be nothing. Uh, historically, it was the haters that kept me in the headlines and now it's just people that kind of get that maybe I wasn't such a twat after all, but that the media needed you to believe I was a twat in order that you could ignore everything I was trying to warn about, which has come to pass. <laughs> anyway, there was a thing I wanted to also get off my tiny tits. Um, and that was, I'm wondering, do you reckon my tits are gonna get tinier due to Katie's arms? Because if I get everything off my tiny tits, presumably do my tits get smaller or bigger? don't know also my children or my mother we do this every week this is the 10 past uh, warning to my mother or my children bugger off this is not for you i am a your mother and you need to respect me and therefore you mustn't listen to mummy doing this be my own mother i'm your daughter you mustn't know that i swear have ever had sex or have had babies or how those babies happened so please not mother monty don children go to bed do your teeth Put the lid on the toothpaste, for God's sake. Clean the sink afterwards. If the toilet roll needs changing, change the toilet roll and hang your towels up. Otherwise, get off this, go to sleep and try and be a great person tomorrow. Try and make one person smile and don't be expelled. General rules of mothering. 
Now, um, the thing that's pissed me off is, uh, pissed me off, I say pissed me off. No, the thing I'm calling out is the phrase due to COVID. So if you hear the phrase due to COVID already make like me, right? So if you hear the phrase due to COVID already do a Katie. And when I say do a Katie, that means going, <clears throat> that, that's like, come on then, <laughs> bring it. So when you hear due to COVID, yeah, you're ready, right? That's how I go about the world. So if I see something happen, ooh, gossip. I need to kind of remember to tell you there was an incident outside the airport at West Palm Beach yesterday. It was awful. Um, but that's where that's where something like that happens, and I'm there. I'm ready. Anyway, if you hear the phrase "due to COVID," get ready because what you're going to hear next is a load of old shit, and you need to be ready for that in order to call it out. So what it basically involves is companies, businesses, um, hotels, airlines, anybody really who wants to try and con you in order to make more money, they've stopped doing some shit or other. And it's very inconvenient, it doesn't help your life, it's not in your interest whatsoever, and it's got piss all to do with COVID. It's just that they're being miserable bastards. And let me give you an example. Let's go down to the lobby, ask, do you still have a shuttle to the airport? No, due to COVID, they don't say it like this because they're Americans, so, but I've just liked that accent. Due to COVID, we've stopped the shuttle to the airport. Uh, well, no, bullshit. It's not due to COVID, is it? I'm not, not getting a shuttle to the airport because a couple of people once got a bit of seasonal flu, coughed a bit and some of them fell over dead. No, there's no shuttle to the airport because it's cheaper for you not to be asked to run one because it's 5.30 in the morning and no bastard wants to work at 5.30 in the morning apart from me because I love being at work at 5.30 in the morning because I'm epic. Um, so that, then we have uh, due to COVID, uh, this is on the aircraft and I'm sorry for my beautiful British friends um, who aren't allowed to freaking fly anywhere because bollocks, bollocks, Boris Potato in a wig is at utter knob end and thinks that by not allowing us to fly anywhere, everyone will be much more miserable and therefore do what he says and get vaccinated, which is a load of old shit too. Um, but anyway, due to COVID, uh, there's no longer going to be food or drink served on the plane. Oh, I'm sorry, due to COVID, does it mean we can't drink? Does it mean we can no longer get shit faced on a plane? Does it mean if I have a gin and tonic, would that mean I'm instantly going to drop dead from COVID? Am I going to get the Indian variant, perhaps? If I get, ooh, a Bacardi and Coke, what does that mean? Do I get, definitely get the Indian variant if I was to have a frickin' drink? So please know that this due to COVID, due to COVID, we no longer have a frickin' place for you to have some food. Due to COVID, we no longer have any fun anymore. Due to COVID, we've stopped doing this. Due to COVID, we want you to be miserable bastards and never do anything again for the rest of your life. Screw due to COVID. Right? And if anyone says, due to COVID, f f feel free to politely say, I'm sorry, that's not due to COVID, is it? That's due to the fact you're restricting services in order to increase your bottom line. That's my phrase. It's a little bit, you know, over the top, but that's me. And I will just say, frickin' American Airlines, all of your air stewards, lazy bastards. You've turned into lazy bastards. You've decided that due to COVID, you're not going to do piss all for a flight and you're going to sit at the back in your polyester uniform and you're not going to serve anyone shit all. Well, I see right through you, little chubbers, because that polyester uniform is getting a lot tighter than it used to be. And when you finally do a walk up the aisle because you've absolutely been obligated to, to go and blow the captain or whatever it is you've got to do, you are charging enough electricity to set off a chuffing lightning bolt down the aisle because you need to be moving your chubby little ass and give out some goddamn drinks and beverages, whatever the shit that is, and stop being a lazy bastard due to COVID. Okay, feel better. The other thing, Prince Harry. This is a plea from the Katie's arms for Prince Harry to stop being a dickhead. Now look, I forgave the fact you're ginger because I'm a kind and caring person, because I'm an excellent bird and because you served in the military at one point where at least you wore some camos for a bit and did a bit of running to camera which was epic loved all that shit and you used to go out with a hot south african who had blonde hair brilliant tits and you I, how you didn't marry her I, just that would have made the ginger thing okay because you would have had a hot blonde wife so okay you did you screwed all of that but now I'm pissed off with you being ginger because you're now also being a twat and you don't get to be a twat and ginger. Like that's, that's just too much. Oh, have I got, no, it's 
just checking, just checking my teeth while we're doing the Katie thumbs, just checking. Um, <laughs> I did actually have homemade soup today. So these darling people that have me come speak, a lady made me homemade soup. <laughs> I don't know what that, I think she thought, it, I think people want to like heal me or restore me to full health. <laughs> It was so nice as well, it was like being home. It made me feel really at home and that's so cute. Um, back to Prince Harry, not the homemade soup. So Prince Harry now is criticizing America for their first amendment. He thinks that the freedom of speech that you have here in America is utterly mad. I tell you what, Harry, here's a plan. Not only are you gonna be a ginger and a twat and marry trailer trash and then completely hook up the royal family, I know, why not shit on America as well? What a brilliant, brilliant plan. <laughs> nice one, Harry. Crap up on the UK where you used to have a home but no bastard wants you there anymore. And now you've moved to America, shit on their doorstep as well. That is like, you know, on a scale of one to complete ginger twat. You're, you're verging on like a, on an 11 there, Harry. You know, Jesus. I, anyway. The First Amendment is a truly glorious thing and the only thing I love more than the Americans' First Amendment is, of course, their second, which means you can own a weapon. I've been on the range this week firing semi-automatics and handguns and there is nothing quite like the feeling of firing a weapon and hitting a target in the throat. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Second Amendment because it protects the Americans' right to have their first and at no time in modern history has there ever been a greater weapons cache across the great states of America? And it gives me great joy and delight to know that. Uh, Florida, by the way, people are asking me where to live in America. If you can come, come to Florida. This is now known as the free state of Florida. If you need a name to look up, Google the name DeSantis, the greatest living governor in the states of America. He has overturned the right for Black Lives Matter to be utter twats on the street. He is restoring election integrity by suggesting people need to show who they are to chuffing well vote. And every new day he comes up with another goddamn reason to protect the freedoms of this great nation. So the plan is to come to Florida. Do not come to Florida if you vote blue. If you voted for Democrat, British Labour, stay where you voted for that shit. You made that mess and rather like a small child in a diaper or a dog that's just pissed on your carpet, sometimes they need to have their nose rubbed in it. You stay in your blue state where you voted for bullshit. Don't bring your bullshit blue to red states. If you're a homeowner in the states, please, 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 if you live in the red state of Florida or Texas, do not sell your home to a Democrat. Now that sounds racist. It has suggestions of ethnic cleansing, I'm sure. Maybe it makes you feel like I'm definitely um, some kind of red nationalist. I think all of those things probably sound quite fair. Um, <laughs> I've heard commentary on the um, Israel and Hamas fight going on. And of course, everything is skewed in favor of the Palestinians, as you would anticipate, uh, because we have a Muslim majority uh, in the UK, rapidly forming hands is in the power of the Muslim majority. So obviously you can only ever hear that poor, poor Palestine. Um, what I would say, of course, is if we just scroll this right back, the Arab nations have 22 countries to call their own. And no matter how you see this fight, of course, uh, Israel has just one. Israel has one nation. There is one Jewish nation. There are 22 Arab nations. It's much like, you know, any of the questions I've ever asked is if, you know, being a Muslim is so great. And I'm sure it's brilliant. I'm sure if you're Muslim, you just love it. So brilliant. But there's 22 Arab nations. I would definitely want to hang out with my other Arab pals, like totally, and I would probably want to leave the one nation that Israel has to itself. You know, just a thought. <sighs> also, you know, Hamas are terrorists. So you can say, oh, it's terrible, they're shelling civilians. It's not like that at all. That's just the BBC misreporting what they already know to be true because of where their funding comes from. If you're going to throw rockets at Israel, wherever you throw rockets from is likely to face retaliation. If Hamas terrorists would stop using children's playgrounds and schools to throw rockets from, they would find that less children were injured, wouldn't they? You know, we've had this bullshit from John Oliver and it's all over Twitter. Oh, how brilliant by John Oliver. It basically asks for equality of outcome in a war. If there's one thing you're not going to get in a war, it's equality of outcome, darlings. One side tends to win and the other side tends to get shat on. That's just the sort of truth. 
So anybody on here with your Palestinian flags, please do piss off my darlings because I'm not interested in your view, nor free Palestine, nor any of the things that you want to do to just have another damn rally in London about a country that isn't ours. Okay, that was the most political we're ever gonna get on the Katie's arms. Um, now the BBC has come out with a hugs, how to hug, how to hug someone. <laughs> Can you imagine the state broadcaster that you pay with your taxes has put up a post, an image of how to hug someone safely? <laughs> Can you imagine being that big a twat? I mean, unless you're Prince Harry and you're like an 11 on the twat scale. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine if your job was creating the graphic of how to hug more safely? Can, can you even imagine <laughs> so there's this bullshit picture now of how to hug someone safely and the idea is i don't know what the idea is you sort of do this i think and you don't have your face next to someone and i'm guessing you'll sort of hold them at a you sort of probably do the weird kind of scared of bodies hug so i say do the opposite obviously if you're gonna hug someone i don't think anybody at the katie's arms need advice on this but this is where i say smear yourself up against people right you've got to really uh, get in there and everywhere i go on this speaking tour that's what i do i go in there and i grab people close and i try and snuggle my little face into their necks and i kiss people because one of the ways we break through this stuff is by kissing people. I have kissed the mask off the face of someone in, <laughs> in um, where was I? <laughs> where was I? I was in Harry's bar. You know, it's perfectly possible to physically intimidate someone into getting over the fact that they thought they needed to be scared of COVID. So ignore anyone, anyone that tries to draw you a diagram of how to hug someone is probably a pervert. You know, like the mask perverts in their cars on their own, mass pervert. Mass perverts are probably the sort of people who are also drawing how you should hug someone. <laughs> Freaks. Okay, what time is it? It's 21 minutes past and I'm genuinely going to try it. Now, there's a question box, which I'm always scared of because I'll probably A, fall off the friggin' fancy store thing and I would probably rather <laughs> like to answer questions from down here. So um, I'm going to try and do just that. This could go incredibly wrong or I'll fall off and then we all get to have a, a laugh. Ah, is this a Katie's arms or just a lie? Well, well, yes, I mean, you know, you could argue it's anything right with me. This is supposed to be a Katie's arms because I don't ever do a live normally because I think people only need so much of Hopkins in their life, right? So this is my Katie's arms this week. And I have really been trying poorly to do them on a Friday at 8 p.m. UK time. But I balls that up again this week, usually because I'm on a plane train or standing on my feet speaking. Um, so that's what this is supposed to be. Can I say hello, Brian? I can. Hello, Brian, from me, Katie Hopkins. <laughs> I also do, um, just so people know, I do do cameos. I don't do them for myself or money for myself. The money goes to the epilepsy hospital that saved me uh, from my epilepsy. Um, so just so you know. And, um, uh, but I do do cameos for birthdays and things, or if people need roasting. So if you have a relative that's a complete pathetic soy boy, um, you know, vaccine taken lunatic, buys into the masking bullshit, um, then that's, you know, the sort of cameo that that's my preferred uh, cameo. Who do I respect? Oh, golly. Um, so the people I respect are never really well known. People always ask me, oh, do you know blah, blah, blah? Do you know blah, blah, blah? They typically fill in the gap with a a male name of someone from a radio or TV show, um, a sort of a, oh, I don't know, Dan Bongino, or a, I, I mean, I love Douglas Murray to death. He's the absolute darling. Um, but, you know, who do I respect? I don't, it's not really anybody that's well known. Uh, the people I love really are just normal people trying to crack on. So I love the guy here. I'm staying at this nice hotel. The guy that came and picked me up in the minibus, he's actually an airline pilot that lost his job or lost his training um, and he's just there driving the damn minibus. But because we got tatting, you find that he's also an airline pilot and he's hoping to be reinstated to his job soon. I mean, what a bloody legend. And I imagine how he gets treated by some of the knob ends that stay in a hotel and they think that they own the place. Uh, so really the people I respect are people that try and work really hard, uh, graft for a living. Black cabbies I love because the chance that anybody would learn how to, to pass the test that a black cabbie uh, tech passes and things. I love people that work on checkouts and are still mannerly or kind of funny or have time for people. You know, I love people who 
just just people that just do ordinary shit and get on with it and then try and help someone else out or manage to have a laugh at the end of the day. I typically think famous people are assholes. I think people who get celebrity status are assholes. You know, and I guess I know that people in the media, are do, in order to keep their jobs now, they have to be an asshole because they have to ignore the truth. So, yeah, my heart's always with the regular guy. And I know that if someone came to this hotel and went to see the receptionist or the lady at the breakfast bar who I hugged this morning <laughs> or the guy who runs the minibus, they'd think I was all right. And uh, that's perfect for me. That's all I really care about. Um, you love me then? Well, yes, of course I love you. If you're just an ordinary person doing ordinary shit and not looking for kudos for it. Um, and the people I can't stand are people who try and get ahead by being the biggest victim they can be. You know, I always like the idea that if you're going to be um, good at something, go and be good at it. Be the toughest person you can be, or the strongest person, or the kindest person, or the person that can take the most knocks and get back up again. Which is why I actually love boxing, because I just think if you can get in a ring with someone who's going to lamp you on the face, imagine with a nose like mine, I'd really like to do a boxing match with some of the victims out there and just twat them one in the face, if I'm honest, in a non violent, nor threatening way. Um, although I suppose it is slightly violent and threatening to say that you want to twat someone in the face, but, you know. Um, right, I'm going to take a couple more questions because I'm really trying. I'm really trying my best. Um, my view on a, on Gypsy's Travellers. Uh, wasn't that the twat uh, Matthew Dickhead Paris? Because now he's got some travellers near his fancy pants pad, and so now he's pissed off with travellers and gypsies. Frankly, A, if you're one of those travellers that has those carts with the horses that stop and have a nice bit of grass on the side of the road, I bloody love you. I would love to sleep in one of those carts. That seems to me to be a perfect model for life. Sleep in a cart, feed your horse, have the odd piss behind a bush. Brilliant! Um, so, and also, the more we go through life, the more I've realised that everybody needs to be living their life the way they goddamn well please, frankly. You know, I used to be a little bit anti-tattoos. Now I say... Do what the shitting hell you want, apart from to my children, because you're too young yet, and I'm still going to decide how the will's going to come out. Um, oh, I know, I was going to quickly tell you about the, what happened outside the airport. Man comes out, wife comes out, the man must have got there to pick the wife up. During the period that the wife's been away, the freaking dog's died. She comes out of the airport, you killed him! You killed... She's screaming, you killed him! I don't know, it's the dog at this point, so I'm assuming someone's dead. I've gone into Hopkins mode, which is... And I'm now ready because someone's been killed. And then she throws her shit at him, throws her bag at him. Stuff goes everywhere, case explodes, and off she stomps. Still screaming, you killed him. And a man's there, like, not knowing what to do. Stuff all over the road. It's the picky-uppy, droppy-offy bit of the airport where everyone's a psychopath. And there's a guy being utterly ruined by his wife who's shouting that he's killed someone. So we're all assuming he's genuinely killed someone. So obviously I go in there to try and sort it all out, get the man into safety, get his shit picked up, get another man to move his car so that we can get his stuff cleared up, stop the man from losing his shit and work out if he's actually killed someone. Turns out all he's killed is a dog, which I mean is sad, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, the dog died. Possibly there was an issue with the dog. Either way, it hasn't gone too well. I hope that guy's okay. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all the, um, and also whilst, the, whilst I was about to move the car with a man in to get the shit from under the car that had thrown there, the bonkers man who'd just been shouted at by his wife for killing the dog, started to make a move to go under the car to get the shit that was under the car and I thought he was gonna get freaking well run over, at which point we would have had two people dead. Anyway, that's just my average day. That happens in my average day, how does that happen? So my darlings, um, dogs are for killing. That's, yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit of a Chinese, uh, bit of a Chinese slant on that one. <laughs> Imagine going to that festival where they boil dogs alive. Oh my God. <laughs> what did Prince, um, Prince Philip, God rest his soul, said? If it's got two legs and it flies, but it's not a plane. If it's got four legs and it's not a chair. If it uh, swims in the sea. No, if it swims in the sea, but it's not a submarine, the Cantonese will eat it. <laughs> I miss Prince Philip. Right, um, thank you. Can we get married? Um, I can put you on the list and you wouldn't want to be married to me because I'm a huge pain in the arse. I snore, 100% snore, and um, that's awful. I, um, sometimes when I, I cough, I wee. That, so that's not good. That's just, you know, that sometimes when I run, I wee as well. Just 
so everyone knows you just have to wait for it to dry off so this idea this idea of what you want to marry even i don't know what you're looking at cause it's not great uh you definitely don't want to be married to it i'm a complete asshole. in fact i'm sure you know we've just been, i've just been talking to my children and they're like yeah we're looking forward to you coming back we're also you know quite enjoying our life without you so it's kind of you to offer but the truth of being married to me is is that i'm a bit of a dickhead really um okay uh that's it i think i think my love um, so listen, we'll um, try and do this again next week. And Well, we will do it one of these days. I will try and make it Friday at 8 p.m., but honestly, I don't know where I am. And I um, wanted to say as well, thank you for all the kind comments about uh, me being on War Room. We're going to go back, I think, and try and do a special with Steve Bannon. Um, and I'm going to try and clean up Steve Bannon. It's going to be a challenge. And then also thank you to everybody for selling out my uh, event in Colorado. 300 people now in a room. It's going to be brilliant, unzipped. Uh, it's going to be the rudest yet, but it's going to be the most fun yet. And I think it's just going to be brilliant. People are flying in uh, from the West Coast to Colorado, all sorts of places. So I really, I don't know what to say other than uh, you guys are the best and I have the best supporters out there. Whether you love me or hate me, uh, you're all part of this and I'm so grateful. And tomorrow is going to be our 10,000 step challenge. So it doesn't matter if you're going to do 10,000 steps. It doesn't matter if you only do, say, let's say a thousand steps. Whatever is your target, what we're going to do, and then we're going to post that up there. And we're just going to, everyone's going to, I know it's pissing it down in the UK, and I know it's shit. Uh, and I know it's easy for me because I'm sat here in sunny Florida. But tomorrow, you're going to set yourself a step target. You don't have to go out and about. You can do it on your stairs. Don't tell me you live in a bungalow. Just, just work with me. Don't give me the excuses because, you know, I don't give a shit about excuses. If you're paraplegic, clearly I'm not telling you to go and do steps. If you've only got one leg, obviously you can hop. But just don't come at me with that. I can't because I'm, uh, I've got big bones or I was born fat. I don't give a shit about your excuses. Uh, just get your ass out there. Do some steps for me because I promise you, every step you do, you'll feel better about yourself. And every time you take a step, you know where you go? You go forwards. And any time we're going forwards, that's when we're winning. Okay, my loves, I'm going to fall off this uh, stool as I try and end this. <laughs> And I will uh, see you all next week sometime. And otherwise, I'll be catching up uh, with my Instagram family on the road. <laughs>